Okay, that's, I, you know what? I retired and we moved here to Korea. We sold everything we have in the United States. We got an apartment, we got a car, we got our visas. But I, I still need something else to do. I've seen people like painting miniatures and 3D printing, so I'm kind of interested in that. And maybe I should start learning how to paint again. Now it's been a minute since I painted, and it's matter of fact, it's been over 40 plus years since I took a paintbrush to a model. So that kind of tells you it's been a minute. Yeah, let's 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 try painting. Maybe that'll be relaxing. Okay, so that. Uh, We'll do that, and we got that. I mean, that's got to be relaxing, right? I went to the hobby store, saw this, and I was like, wow, this looks really cool. You get 10 miniatures for the price. But the logical part of my brain didn't calculate and say, okay, the, the dimensions of the box and the figures, they're really small. You know, they're just like models. They come on these, these things here. You know, they're injection molded. And then... You gotta cut all out the tiny, tiny parts, and then you gotta get super glue. So there's always joy when you have super glue, and you gotta put these little things together. And you put them all together, and then you you get your paint set. And we'll paint the guys blue, and and we'll use white, and we'll use green, and lo and behold, colors have changed in the last 40 years. There's no longer silver; it's lead belcher. It's Corax White. I don't even know what a Corax is, but apparently it, it's an off-white. Bugman's Glow? There's no brown anymore. It's Bugman's Glow. Tesseract Glow? Yeah, what, what kind of color is that? When I picture in my mind and you say Tesseract, what we end up thinking is Loki and the, the blue square with the Infinity Stone inside of it. No, it is not blue. It is green. It is... It is kind of like a high-vis green. So apparently in the last 40 years, a lot of colors have changed. There's no longer the basic colors anymore. So now the first part of this, I'm going to spare you the frustration and the pain and the suffering of putting these things together because basically the parts are so small, I ended up rage throwing parts everywhere. So here are some pictures of the completed assembled guys from the Primaris Intercessors. I mean, they get a lot of detail, look at that. I mean, they are incredibly detailed. And they're this tall. So the first thing that you have to do from what I've gained and gleaned off the interwebs and social media is that you need to prime these things. So I'm gonna prime these things with some Krylon paint because uh, they don't have regular primer paint here, black primer, so. And so that's what we're going to do next. Hit this up and see what happens. I think it's pretty good. And I think we did fairly well. Yeah, this is the first dip into painting miniatures. You primed everything black and then you go over this and you kind of do like a dry brushing of silver. But in this case, it would be lead belcher, or maybe rune fang steel, and just kind of highlight the areas of where light would hit this little miniature thing. And then after that, then you can go through, and then once that dries, then you can paint with this macragi, the blue, <laughs> the blue that is used on these things. And then you go over that and it provides depth. And instead of just painting it blue, blue, it ends up, there's some translucency, I guess, in this blue. Now, people on YouTube have these nice little handhold things that they bought. I, I have a box. I was taking the said box and poking four holes through it, as you can see there, and then just kind of threading a rubber band. And then that way I just kind of take the rubber band flip the little base of the miniature in between those bands and so now I have this this holder thing. It's not as cool as some of the Citadel like handheld figurine holder things. I have a box with some packing tape and a rubber band. So we're gonna make this work as best as I can. And like I said, we're gonna end up hitting the private and kind of getting him squared away. 
There we got the primer on there, and I think what we're going to end up doing is the Rune Fang. Rune Fang Steel. So, apparently you use the darker colors with a dry brush, and then you go back with a lighter color like the white just to get the edges. Let's see what that does. And, let's go ahead. Well, the whole idea of this, I guess, is to provide that depth through the different colors. You can see there. And then when you come back over with your, whatever the name of the blue is, with the blue, and then the other colors, that they're a little bit translucent. So the blue, the dark, and the lighter areas will shine through that blue. So... Alrighty, I think we'll call that done. Okay, so that's what we got going on. Uh, there, there he is with his Zenithal. I think that's the word. Eventually, I'll, I will learn these words, I promise. That's, that looks decent. That's better than what I was expecting for me to do. So, what do you think? I don't know. Put it in the comments section down below and, and tell me if I'm headed in the right path, in the right direction, or it's totally jacked up and just prime it all black and start over. I don't know. We'll, we'll see what happens. That work. But I think what I'll end up doing is letting this dry for a little bit, for a few hours maybe, and then we'll come back through the magic of editing and we'll hit it up with blue. So let's magically travel through time and just like that, through the magic of editing, we have allowed to dry and we're going to go and we're going to have the blue. I don't know if you know this, but if you don't press record, yeah, it doesn't record. What are the odds? Okay. That's what we got going on. So, I think that's enough attention to detail for that I can put up with right now. Alrighty, so there we have it. Uh, I think we have done this enough and we, we we ended up painting our dude. Uh, you can see some pictures there, some, some more close-up pictures. But yeah, it really kind of highlights. I mean, this thing is less than two inches tall. It's like 1.75 inches, which is incredibly small. And painting that in all the little crevices and everything, you somebody could go insane from doing all this. But so far, I'm digging it. So with that, we're going to let this dry. And I think the next thing I'm going to tackle is the Bugman's Glow, which is apparently the, the new name for brown. We'll get a little bit closer and you can see what I'm doing. And once again, I forgot to press record on the camera, so I will work on that. But as you can see, we definitely got some color in. We've been working on the brown. And overall, I'm pretty pleased with the progress so far. So anyway, that's going to be it for the video today. Uh, so we'll do another video where we do some more work because the sun has gone down. I need sustenance and I need to go over the colors, flavor, horn, rune star, whatever the colors are these days. But uh, if you enjoyed this video and if you have any comments or suggestion in regards to what I did right, what I did wrong, I mean, I've got 10 guys to practice on. So this is the first guy. So be a little merciful. Uh, I've got some other paints coming in. I have army, uh, army paint, you know, a set of that coming in. And then as time goes on, maybe I'll get some stuff that can, won't be so ghetto and boxy. And yeah, it's time to bid you adieu and we'll see you on the next video. So peace and keep killing it, Warriors. Be sure to like this video and subscribe to stay up to date with what's going on with us. The Buried Life is where we retired in Korea. We'll see you on the next video. Peace.